bright, beautiful, and only a little over 3,700 pounds dry. Folks, this is the 2021 Coleman Rubicon 1608 RB. And let's dive right in, folks. Uh, I, I really love this floor plan and for a couple different reasons. One, I like the wood. It's bright. It's open. Uh, you don't seem closed in, even though it's a smaller RV. Plenty of solar on here as well, which we'll talk about in just a second. But I think my favorite part of this one is the fact that it comes in, again, at that 3,700-pound dry mark. And it has a little under uh, 1,100 pounds of carrying capacity. So what that quick math tells me if you have a tow vehicle that can tow 5,000 pounds, even if this thing is fully loaded, you can still tow it. And that's huge because a lot of people are right at that. If you have, uh, you know, like a, a properly equipped Explorer or a Sorento, you can still tow this RV, which is fantastic. If you're, you know, looking for a, again, lighter weight RV where you don't have to go out and buy a half ton pickup. So let's actually start right up front. We'll kind of work our way back. Uh, one of the things I want to point out right away is that this one is a little bit narrower than a, a lot of your larger RVs, right? Instead of being eight foot wide, it's seven foot wide. But with that being said, it doesn't feel closed in at all. You know, I don't know if it's, again, because of the, the slide out we have here, just because it is so brighter, uh, you know, just all that combined, uh, but it doesn't feel narrow at all. But the nice thing about being seven foot is one, it helps us on the weight, and two, you get less wind resistance when you're towing it down the road. And when you're towing with an SUV versus a big pickup, that can be a big deal. Uh, also, the bed, they went east to west here, but it is a, a, a over six foot, right? Like I can lay down on here. Here, let me show you, see if I can do this without uh, oh, the, old, the old abs there. But so if I put a pillow right here, you can see that my feet are not touching the wall, right? Um, that's, that's a big deal. So, um, you know, a lot of times you, you have these smaller RVs and they'll have an RV queen and, you know, your feet are cramped or hanging off and it's not what you want. But here, that's not going to be an issue power tower right there to charge your cell phones or if you have a CPAP machine or anything else you're good to go windows all the way around here it's something else that they absolutely nailed in the Rubicon you have a big window in the slide you have windows up here you have a windshield a window in the kitchen a window in the door it just lets in a ton of natural light which I absolutely love uh, on a hot day like today I wish I had her plugged in because I'd fire up the AC right up top here I uh, could definitely use it, and this one will cool it down nice and fast, 13.5 kBTU there. Uh, and, of course, we have a uh, furnace in here as well if you are camping and it's a little bit colder out. Storage across the top, roller shades, which I like, blackout shades. There's a spot up here to, uh, to mount a TV if you're looking for a TV in your RV. And, again, I love the woodwork. It's not like a, a full white, but it is a nice, bright wood. I think they did an awesome job. Really cool designer glass there. I like how they have LED lights up here as well. Uh, I think that it looks really pretty. And if you kind of take a look underneath, you will see an LED light here, just kind of helping to brighten up your kitchen and countertop space. Um, you know, higher-end countertops here as well. You know, it's, it's not going to be T-mold or anything like that. Um, and because it is, you know, like a thermal formed, it allows for an undermount sink. Not only is it an undermount stainless, but it's also an apron front, which I really enjoy that look. And the back, you, again, you have that big long window to really help brighten up this kitchen space. Two burner cooktop right over to this side here. Um, you know, if I have to give it one, uh, I guess, complaint is I wish they really did give a three burner instead of a two. Uh, not that a two burner doesn't work. It works just fine. Um, you know, but a lot of times you get into a three burner and you get into the, the DSI or you know, the, the spark ignition rather than having to have like a match or a lighter here. So I would have liked to have seen that. But, you know, if that's the only thing, the only complaint I have, which honestly it is, um, then I, I definitely enjoy this camper. Um, you'll also see that because it is recessed, this does count as uh, extra prep space too. Plus you have that huge section over to this side. Uh, so lots of prep space uh, in this camper. Drawers running all the way down, folks. Take a look at that. You know, I always say you have to have at least one drawer uh, in any kitchen. This one, you got four, so more than enough space. Excellent space for pots and pans here, too. And then right underneath is your microwave. So uh, rather than putting it up top, they put it down underneath, which I think works just fine. Kind of making our way over to the side. Um, your multimedia center will be located right up here. It does have the HDMI, USB port there, Bluetooth capable, of course, as well. Tank monitoring panel, awning, water heater does run off both gas and electric. You can turn both of those on at the same time for faster recovery. 
In the very back is the refrigerator. This is a GE 12 volt fridge. I really like that in this camper because this one comes with a 190 watt solar panel, 190 watts up on the roof, comes with it, has a 1200 watt inverter. So if you are boondocking, I mean, this thing it basically will run nearly indefinitely if you have two batteries with that much solar, the 190 watt solar. Plus you can still uh, add more if you so choose. There's another solar output or input rather outside, which we'll take a look at. Uh, but I, I really like the 12 volt fridge. I think that was an excellent option here. Making our way into the bathroom. I'll come take a squat on the toilet just to kind of show you space. You can see I have good leg space here. Same thing with the shoulders, no issues at all. Um, you know, I could sit here and read a book if I wanted to. Stepping into the shower at six foot tall, you know, 200 pounds. I, I don't feel like I'm gonna fall through the shower. I have more than enough headroom. Even without the skylight, you know, I still uh, am, am not quite touching. I'm just about there, but with that skylight, which spans nearly the entire shower, I'm good. You'll see mirrored medicine cabinet right up top. I like that instead of having, you know, just like a plastic one, it's actually framed out, it's nice. Sink, storage underneath there, enough space for a trash can if you want. And then when we make our way back out, we'll take a look at the slide right over here. Let me close that, sorry, Aaron. Your thermostat for your furnace will be located here, by the way, folks. Um, you know, this one does have uh, the controls on the AC itself for the furnace, that'll be there electrical outlet right down below plus the jackknife sofa this does drop down into a bed um, there isn't any storage in the slide um or, or, yeah in, in the slide underneath the sofa because you have the slide so what i was going to say the nice thing about this is being a narrow slide uh it also you have walk space when we trade spots here aaron i'll bring the slide in um while i'm talking about it though it is also worth noting right up top you have the the wine guard there the uh the wi-fi and 4g lte capability so, you know, if you're looking to have, you know, internet on the go, you can get a plan that's built in, works super well. And just like that, the slide comes in, uh, but you know, really all I wanna show you is that when the slide is all the way in, and there it is, how much walkway you still have here, right? You have more than enough space to get to the bed. You can get to the bathroom. The fridge is back here, so that's not impeded at all. The other thing I like about this is being this open, is um, I don't know about you folks watching, but when I pack, a lot of times I'll have totes and I can stack totes right in here. Um, if I have bikes and I wanna you know, tie them down, I'd definitely tie them to something, but if you wanna put bikes in here, there's enough room for it. You just have a lot of space for a lot of stuff. Now that we've seen the inside, let's talk about the outside of the 2021 Coleman Rubicon 1608 RB. Starting off right up front on the pas Bastion Power Tongue Jack. Um, I really like having a power tongue jack on an RV just because it makes it so much easier to connect and disconnect from your tow vehicle. Plus, it makes it a lot easier to level, right? Because uh, this is what's gonna level your camper front to back. So having the power tongue jack, you just sit here and flip a switch and I'd much rather do that than crank it up and down. Right behind that, you have two 20-pound propane tanks with a cover. Uh, rails for your battery, and again, if you want to fit two batteries there, there is enough room to do so, which I love. And you have the Diamond Dutch plating on the front, helping to protect that front end from some of the rocks and debris that may get thrown up by your tow vehicle. LED lights in the cap, and my favorite part is right up front, and that is the big windshield. That makes such a huge difference uh, when inside the RV. A lot of manufacturers right now are putting like a faux windshield up front to make it look good from the outside. But man, oh man, does that make a difference when you're on the inside, just bringing in all of that light. Coming right around to the side, I mentioned this one was prepped for extra solar if you want it. And that's what you have right there. But when we come inside, you will see the solar controller is built in. And again, you have a 190 watt panel up on the roof. Battery disconnect is there. Light switch for your uh, cap lights and the 1200 watt pure sine wave inverter is located there. So that way, even without shore power, with that inverter, uh, some of your uh, outlets and stuff will work inside. So you will have that 120 power and that can be a huge deal. 12 volt power awning, touch button, roll it out. Same thing to go back in, LED light strip on there too. Couple of speakers, those are controlled by that multimedia center inside. Uh, you'll see this rail. What this rail is for is actually those boxes right there, you'll see that is a griddle. And so that way you can hook it up if you wanna do some cooking outside, that makes it nice and easy to do so. You'll see right underneath is that propane quick connect so that you can cook. So even if you don't use this one, if you have uh, you know, like a Blackstone or something already you wanna bring, by all means do so. 
and uh, you can plug it right into there. You also see your spare tire underneath and note that that is a full size spare tire. Uh, the tires on this one um, you know, are much more aggressive, right? You have big lugs on there, 15 inch. You wanna make sure if you have to replace it, you have an exact match and that is what they have given you underneath the RV. Electrical outlet, in case you need to plug anything in. Beautiful graphics on the side. I think they did a bang up job here. I, I really, really like it. It's uh, modern, it's simple. You know, they're getting away from a lot of the swooshes. I think they definitely nailed it both inside and out on aesthetics. LCI solid step, easy to use, folds up into the RV, aluminum treads with adjustable feet and the uh, adjustable grab handle right here too. Stabilizer jacks, they are manual, uh, which I don't necessarily hate, they're pretty easy. Uh, I'd much rather have manual sta uh, stabilizer jacks and a power tongue jack than the other way around. And you do have four on this coach to help stabilize everything when you're walking around, so it's not wobbling on you. Um, this one does have a fully walkable roof. And so because of that, they tried to make it easy to get up there. So you have this ladder here as well. That way you can get up there for uh, inspection, make sure that, you know, um, it, a bunch of pine cones and stuff and sap didn't get up there, uh, as well as cleaning it, general maintenance, checking lap sealant. It's always good to get up on your roof a couple times a year. Coming around to the off camp side, you can see this one definitely uh, got some dirt there. It needs a bath, but uh, yeah, that's what it's for, right? Taking it off-roading. You have all that ground clearance. I love it. Um, this one does have a black and gray tank valve uh, right, located right back here. The handles do match the tank. So gray handle for gray tank, black handle for black tank. 30 amp detachable power cord, black tank flush. Makes it a lot easier to wash out your black tank. Cable inlet here, and lastly, in front of the slide, you have your... Um, your hot water heater, I think this one's Dometic. Yeah, there it is, Dometic. So this will be your six gallon. This one does run off both uh, gas and uh, electric as we saw inside. And again, you can turn both of those on at the same time for faster recovery. And then your water connections will be located right next to that, both your gravity uh, fill for your fresh tank and then your city water connection as well. And folks, that concludes the grand tour of the Coleman Rubicon 1608 RB. If you are interested in this beauty and you would like price and availability, all you have to do is click on the link in the description. Thanks again for watching, folks. I'm Ian Baker, and let's go camping.